to another Tech Central video from Bullet Central. Today we're going to talk to you about borescopes, a very important item in your shooting ensemble. Um, and in particular, we're talking to you about the Hawkeye range from Gradient Lens. Uh, we are very proud to be a dealer, an appointed dealer for uh, Hawkeye. Uh, this is a premium, high-end scope. And there are other uh, competition, uh, other competitive products out there for borescopes, but we firmly believe that uh, this is the product of choice and we're very proud to add it to our great lineup of products on our website. So go ahead and check that out when you get a chance. So I think what I want to uh, just start to uh, start uh, by talking about why a borescope? You know, before I bought, bought my first borescope, some people would say to me, um, oh, crazy, you know, you get a borescope and you're going to have a look down your barrel and you'll never shoot that barrel again. And there's an element of truth to that, actually, because it wasn't so many weeks ago I was at a range and I was uh, looking down a guy's, um, the bore of his barrel and the barrel looked terrible, absolutely awful. And to a point, I must say, I've never seen anything like it, and I would never have expected that barrel to shoot. But the truth of the matter is that it did. So I don't think there's any golden rule about um, what a barrel should look like, um, you know, in order to make it shoot properly. But um, today, and after I've you know bought my my first bore scope and started using it, um, I can tell you that I don't think I'd be able to shoot. Uh, at the level that I do without a great bore scope. Uh, I use it multiple times during the day while at a match. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I'm looking for um, you know, in, in that process. It's not as simple as just putting the scope down the barrel and looking for maybe a, um, a land that is damaged or some copper filing or carbon filing. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that we are looking for. There's good filing and bad filing, and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later. But um, um, I, I will say, you know, moving from the point of, you know, not sure whether I should go and spend the five, six, seven, or eight hundred dollars on a scope uh, to today, I absolutely don't think, you know, I could be without one. In fact, I brought my beaten up one end from uh, from the range and you can see it's all dusty and dented and you know it's got range scope written on it just simply because you know that's the one I keep you know in my equipment going to the range and then I have another one in my workshop because I certainly uh, don't want to be caught uh, with that one you know at, at the range. The range that we uh, sell from Hawkeye uh, mainly that we stock on our website is the, the Classic Slim, the rigid bore scope uh, called the Classic Slim. And there are you know, a couple of uh, uh, variations to it. Uh, we, we sell them in you know, the, the, the basic box, which I think is just under $600, $575 for this. Uh, if you want to go to a nice protective metal case, then you, you know, you're moving up into the, the high 600s, probably about 700 for that, and then almost 900 if you want to have a right angle um, eyepiece. Uh, in fact, if you look at my range scope now, you'll see it's a little bit of a mess inside, but yeah, I've got the standard scope and I've added the, the right angle eyepiece to it because I like to sort of um, you know, look at the inside of the barrel from a slightly more comfortable point. We sell that in the in the 17 inch length and in the seven inch length. Uh, this this particular one here, it's a seven inch, and why I like these, this is more for um, the gunsmith. Here you can see the nice uh, short little scope, and that's really handy when you've got a barrel that's in the lathe and you don't want to remove it from the chuck or your spider and you want to be able to uh, quickly investigate the work you've done um, and you know it's a lot easier to get it and out. 17 inch you know, can get a little bit uh, a little bit tight in that situation. So uh, let's look just a little bit discuss but uh, you know why again a bore scope um, and as I said earlier it's not just a matter of identifying you know whether your barrel is clean or dirty I think it's what you 
you're looking at more than anything is the the type of file. Now we've got carbon filing, we've got copper filing, um, we've got good copper filing and we've got bad copper filing and you are not going to be able to identify this at all, in fact, without being able to look down your ball. Another, um, another real useful, um, a re a useful uh, purpose for the scope is when you, say for example, got a new barrel and you, you know, just screwed the barrel on, you don't really know how that thing is going to behave out of the box, so to speak. Is it going to uh, copper file and you need to then shoot it in for a while until that copper filing, shoot and clean, shoot and clean until that copper filing disappears? Or is it going to be one of those barrels that you just start up and immediately you just get nice, uh, you know, clean light filing in the barrel and you know, um, you know, that barrel, you know, should be fairly decent uh, right from the start in terms of copper filing anyway. Um, and if we just take a look at a barrel, um, the, if you look at your travel spots, I mean, this, you know, first six, seven, eight inches, this is where you're going to get most of your, your carbon issues. And um, you know your last sort of 10 inches down here is where you're going to get more of your you know your, your copper filing. Um, and you know so when I'm at a match and looking at a barrel and I'm sort of you know maybe the barrel's not performing properly or the groups have opened up and I don't think it's a seating depth or a load issue, I would typically get my scope in this side of the barrel to go look for what I would call you know copper streaking or bad copper filing. And, and the difference is, you know, if we, if we, um, if we see that filing in the barrel where you're getting those heavy, dark, copper, uh, laid down streaks, erratic streaks in the barrel, that's the stuff that typically will not um, um, allow you that, that barrel to shoot. Okay. Um, when I when I put the scope down there and I see that nice brushed, sort of almost golden uh, look to to the grooves. Then you know that's the type of copper filing that I'm I'm, I'm comfortable with. On on this side, uh, you can certainly get copper filing as well. Um, but for the most part, you're going to get you know uh, you're going to have to you know look out for things like a carbon ring, maybe just ahead of your 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 uh, case brass, and then um, as you go down into the beyond the chamber, you're going to find that that's where you're going to get quite a bit of carbon buildup as well. Carbon's definitely hold it, get, get out. So you, by using a scope properly and looking, you know, for, you know, for, for the problem areas, you're going to be able to stand, tune your cleaning methods to, um, to what your barrel needs. And I'll tell you another thing, that it's, I don't know why, but there are certain days you can go to a match and you can shoot and your barrel just looks beautiful. Yeah, day later, uh, same barrel, same load, same bullets, same everything, um, and the barrel will start falling. You know, maybe copper falling, and I really don't know what causes the difference, uh, to be honest. Uh, but by using a scope and going down there, I can actually tailor my cleaning methods. I can clean a little bit more aggressively uh, during the day if I see that my barrel is falling. So what I want to look at next now is just you know how we go about uh, taking a look uh, inside the barrel with a scope. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how we use these scopes. Now I think what we'll uh, do is, for purposes of demonstration, we'll use our high-end model here. Put this box up, very beautiful, um, very protective box with a nice uh, closed cell foam in it. It comes. Um, you get um, your your scope. Oopsie, let's get that out of there. And your scope has got the the, the, the bore scope, and you have your mirror tube on the outside of that. Um, there's your protective sleeve around it. It comes with a standard flashlight. Obviously, you do need a light source. Uh, Without that, you're going to find it pretty murky down that barrel. You won't be able to see anything. So you just screw the, the flashlight on pretty, uh, pretty simple. Um, this is your objective lens. And uh, 
we can add to it, I spoke a little bit earlier about the, the right angle light piece. We can use this scope simply by just um, peering through um, this green um, eyepiece here. Or what I like to do, especially if my rifle's in the horizontal position, and I don't want to sort of get down at that angle, I'll just screw this on, and it allows me to actually view through this viewfinder here, view what's going on uh, down the barrel. I much prefer this. Some other people don't like it. I think it's a matter of uh, a matter of preference. So the first thing I do is I attach the the flashlight, and then I, I gently put the the tube down on the table and I open up the flat roll. We have a problem, Houston. No batteries in this, so let's quickly add those. <laughs> and the kit does come with batteries. It also comes with a uh, little set of uh, Q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol. The best thing to actually clean the mirror with is acetone. The thing that's going to take the dirt off quickly, but we don't ship it with acetone because uh, that is a volatile substance. But um, so, but, you know, this works pretty good, the isopropyl, and you get a little bottle with it. So let's do that again. Um, let's turn this thing on, and as you can see here now, I can, you know, as I twist my the um, barrel of the flashlight, I can actually get, uh, you know, a fairly focused beam of light there. Um, and just while talking about lights, I mentioned this is the standard light that comes with it. It's the little mini mag. It does a great job. Um, some people do prefer the LED uh, flashlights that you can buy as an optional extra. They tend to be a lot brighter, um, obviously easier to see. Um, some people who buy the, the, the LED lights feel that it takes a little bit of the color of the cop away. And that is true. Uh, I personally use the LED. I just like to see, you know, everything brightly lit on the inside. But if you buy it standard with this light, you're going to be, you're going to be happy. So let's put the right angle eyepiece on. And we've got these barrels right now. These barrels are, you know, detached from the rifle. Um, typically, you know, they're going to be on your gun. So I'm just going to balance it on this, uh, this box here. And the first thing we want to do. This may be a little bit trickier than I thought, so let's see if we can balance it on this form. There we go. So, one thing you want to remember, this is a stainless steel um, scope tube, and this can damage uh, your rifle if you're going to just, you know, jam it in there uh, without any thought. Uh, and, you know, really important is when you're checking the muzzle end of your rifle, you don't want to be damaging uh, your lens. Then, then your scope is going to cost you a lot and you won't be happy with it. So just make sure that whenever you're putting it in either the chamber or the muzzle end, you put it in carefully. Okay? So here we go. Generally slide that in. And at this point, what you probably find when you use the scope for the first time, it's not going to be focused to your eyes. So our, our focusing system is here. On, that is our focusing eyepiece and in fact if you look at it carefully as I turn it this green eyepiece will move in and out and that's going to give you the focus that you need so let's go in there and while I'm in I can see and I twist it a bit and I can actually now get a very very clear picture of what's going on in there and I can now shift it down I do find I prefer sometimes to actually feed the scope into the barrel carefully and then when I'm in this position and I'm examining the ball, I'm pulling it out. In fact, as I look at this particular barrel, this example, this has got some really nice exa examples of what I would call good copper filing. It's nicely, you know, thin brush layer golden type look to it and yes as you'd expect some carbon filing on the lands and a little bit in the groove so that's what I and then you know I'd come down this end and I would just look a little bit closer we're going to give you some photographs to show you some detail of what I'm looking at here uh, and I you know I'll just check there 
the head of the neck of the case. I want to make sure that we haven't got a carbon build up there. Because uh, if that builds up, you know, you can run into problems when you're chambering around, it could impinge on your case. And again, you know, by identifying that using the scope, you're going to be able to, um, you know, work that and, and, uh, and, and clean it out of there. So let's take this other barrel now and have a look at it from the muzzle end. And as I mentioned, please be really careful when you run this into the barrel. Do not do not contact your crown. And I tend to push it down a little ways. And then as I'm looking at it, I'm pulling it out. It's not coming out here. Oh yeah. Okay, so here we do have an example of some oops, some pretty uh, nasty cover fire. Uh, one thing I also haven't explained, this uh, mirror can rotate um, on the, the, the bore scope so you can actually get a full 360 view of the inside of your barrel. So as you can see from the pictures that are on your screen right now that that type of filing there is a little different to the earlier filing. Those laid down copper streaks when your barrel is filing you will find will often be focused up in this end okay. and if you see that happening and you had a match your only chance is to get on top of that with uh, with uh, some good aggressive cleaning and hopefully you know you, you can get away with it you know in, in your you know the seven shots you're shooting during your match seven eight shots whatever you shoot um, but that's a good example to say you know of, you know the scope how to use it what to look out for. Um, again, this is just a fantastic tool uh, for the, the, especially for you know your accuracy shooter who needs to be on top of, uh, of, of barrel conditions. And it's these little things that can uh, spell the difference between you know coming first or nineteenth at times, or maybe even worse. Uh, the barrels. Uh, the bore of, of, of that barrel is the thing that's going to carry that bullet in as good a condition as possible, spun up as perfectly as it can to the target. And if you've got uh, contamination there and you've got crud in there and you haven't done anything about it, um, well, it's this type of uh, equipment that's going to help you detect that and take action. So. Uh, again, it's not just something that you'd buy just to say, oh, barrel clean or dirty. Barrel is uh, new or old. Um, and one other, uh, one other option I mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, you know, using the, the seven inch version is that for gunsmith, this is critical. I mean, if he's going to be chambering a lot of barrels, he wants to go in there and make sure that you know, there aren't any uh, tooting marks or what. The, the shape of the grooves looks like, what the shape of the lens is, has the barrel been, you know, lapped enough or overlapped, or, and so on. And so it's an invaluable tool for gunsmiths, but it's not restricted to gunsmiths. I think the high-end shooter uh, takes an interest in these equipment and performance would certainly uh, need this. So if you need any more information, uh, please give us a shot. We will uh, gladly uh, mail a brochure to you. Um, it will point you in the right direction of the type of equipment you're looking for. You're always willing to call us at the number on the screen here and we'd be delighted to, to chat to you about our experiences and maybe, you know, uh, help you decide which is the best scope for you. So again, thank you for watching another Tech Central video. Um, we're delighted to have you as, uh, as, as customers and uh, we thank you again for uh, your support. See you soon.